The HVAC industry is full of vague and overused information. Unfortunately, a lot of this information is outdated, inaccurate, or just flat out wrong to the point of being trite and irritating to other technicians in the field who are trying to do the right thing. In this blog post, we'll dispel some of the most common myths and cliches about HVAC so that you can be better informed about your home's heating and cooling system. R22, that stuff's not even legal anymore. No, R22 is not illegal, but I will tell you this, it's not getting any cheaper. The price of R22 rose about 400% in the two years following COVID-19, with no end in sight. As the current supply of virgin R22 diminishes, old recovered R22 from existing decommissioned units is being cleaned and recycled for future use. You have to consider that the last R22 complete systems were installed around 2010, and systems are designed to last about 15 to 20 years. So R22, or even a less expensive substitute refrigerant like R458A, Blue On, will be around at least until 2030. You're gonna need a bigger unit. Now, I'm not saying that a bigger system isn't right for your house. But there are some factors that I would think about when considering moving to a bigger system. Your air ducts are sized for the size system that you have now, most likely. If you get a bigger system, you can really affect the system's static pressure. Static pressure is like the blood pressure in your body. If your heart was too big for your body, it could cause complications with your blood pressure, right? Well, it's the same thing with the static pressure of your HVAC system. And if you're an HVAC technician watching this video, don't just go in the house and say, oh yeah, well, you've got a two and a half ton system in your house, so that's what we're gonna go back with. You might be going back with that same size system, but at least know for sure what the size is that your customer needs by doing a proper load calculation of the house and its surroundings. An HVAC system is one of the most expensive things that people buy for their house. It would be devastating to buy too small or too large of a system. You really want to get this one right. Yeah, you know, that ain't gonna last much longer. My coworker Keith says it best. If I tell you it's gonna break down in three months, it'll last for three more years. And if I tell you it'll last for three more years, it'll break down tomorrow. In times like these, you need to consider repair versus replacement cost. Does it make sense for you to repair it? Is it less than say 15 years old? Maybe a repair is in order if you're hoping to keep it going for a few more years. Is it more than 15 years old? Then you might want to think about it a little bit longer and decide what's best for you. Regardless, if a part breaks down the road and a universal or OEM part is still available, you can repair it all day. See, this shows signs of rust right here. So, does it still work? Outdoor parts are prone to rust. Heat exchangers and gas furnaces are prone to rust. On heat exchangers, rust is not a reason to condemn the furnace. Is there an actual breach or crack in the heat exchanger? Then replace it, if it's available. And I will tell you that systems 20 years or older tend not to have replacement heat exchangers, or you can buy a new system. Rust on your AC coil is not a repair that needs to be made, nor is it an indicator that your AC will fail or spring a leak anytime soon. Yeah, they don't even make those parts anymore. Almost every part of the air conditioning system has a replacement part available for it. It might take a little while to get it, but if the system is less than 20 years old, there's likely a part for it. There are also universal parts available for a lot of systems. That may not be so if it's an upgraded higher efficiency system though. Standard one and two stage systems have a better chance of having those universal parts available, but not the variable speed ones. I would get a second opinion if I didn't feel sure about the technician and what they were saying. Most companies will give you that second opinion for free. Yes ma'am, there's mold inside your ducts. Alright, show me. That's what I would say. Mold can be a big problem when it comes to HVAC systems. You can run the risk of mold spreading and causing serious health problems if it's really there. If an HVAC technician tells you that your system has mold, ask them to show you a picture of the mold. If they can't show you the mold, that's a red flag. If it is in your duct, for sure, you wanna solve that issue. I just find that some technicians mistake a light film of dust inside the duct as mold. 
have them take a picture of it and you decide what you want to do about it. A second opinion, perhaps you can either leave it, go with duct cleaning, or you can replace the ducts. Oh, that thing is way past its life expectancy. You guys have all heard me say this before. Systems are designed to last about 15 to 20 years. Just because the unit has passed that age doesn't mean that you have to buy a new system. As we've said before, the system can be repaired as long as parts are available. When a technician tells you that your system is past its life expectancy, you might wonder if you should believe them. It can be costly to replace a system, and you might not be ready to do so. But there are a few things to keep in mind. First, the life expectancy of a system is based on a normal use of 15 to 20 years. If you've been using your system excessively, or you live in parts of the country that uses systems excessively, or you've not been properly maintaining it, the unit may not last as long as expected, maybe 12 to 15 years. Additionally, new technology is constantly emerging and systems that are just a few years old may already be outdated. What does that mean to you? It's just important to weigh all of these factors before making a decision. Ultimately, only you can decide whether to replace your system, but it's important to get all the information before making that decision. I'm not even able to repair this thing. This is another one where I probably would get a second opinion from a reputable company. I can't tell you how many times another company has condemned a system and suggested a replacement. Then a customer calls us for a second opinion and we find some minor or major repair that can be done to help the customer extend the life of their system. You know, it's not under warranty and I can't even get the parts. There's a common misconception that once a system is no longer under warranty, it's impossible to get parts or make the repairs. This simply isn't true. Just because a system is out of warranty doesn't mean that it can't be repaired. In most cases, it just means that the company no longer has to foot the bill. Parts are almost always available for purchase, even for older models. And while the company may not offer repairs themselves, there are always independent service providers who specialize in out of warranty repairs. So if you're told that your 11 year old system can't be fixed, don't believe it. There's a good chance that with a little effort, you'll be able to find a company that'll get it up and running again. It'd just be a lot cheaper for you to just buy a new one. HVAC companies do have a reputation for being dishonest. After all, they're in the business of selling new systems, not repairing old ones. So when your HVAC system breaks down, it's only natural to suspect that the company is trying to take advantage of you. That's why you shouldn't necessarily believe everything that an HVAC company says. Just because they want to sell you a new system doesn't mean that it's not worth repairing the old one. In many cases, repairs are more cost effective than replacements. So before making any decision, get a second opinion from another HVAC company. You might be surprised at how much money you can save by simply repairing your existing system. It's really not even efficient anymore. Air conditioners have come a long way in recent years, and many models are now much more efficient than older units. Does that mean that you have to upgrade now? Not necessarily. If you've gotten anything from this blog, it's that some people aren't ready to fork over the money for a new, more efficient system. They don't know your budget, they don't know your finances, and where you are in your life right now. They do know how much commission that they'll make off of selling you a new system though. Don't get me wrong, my company sells equipment and we do a great job of replacing systems in the Sacramento area. I just try to reinforce a culture of repairing if the customer wants to repair and replace if the customer wants to replace. If the customer wants to repair and discuss replacement options at the same time, let's do it. Nobody should make you feel pressured into replacing it until you're ready to replace it. Don't touch it. It might not turn back on. What? Okay. We have told people who tell us that their system is iced up and it's not blowing cool air anymore to go ahead and shut it off and wait for us to come back and turn it on. But saying this is just another scare tactic to make you think that the system is near the end of its life. Very likely the next conversation with a tech who says this will be one regarding buying a new system. Yeah, you need to get your air ducts cleaned regularly. Why? Can I see a picture of them so that I can decide for myself? That's probably my first question. There are a few reasons why it's cliche for HVAC companies to tell customers that they need to have their air ducts cleaned. First, it's an easy way for the company to upsell a service that may not be necessary. 
Second, it's a way to scare customers into thinking that their homes are full of dirt and dust. And finally, it's simply not true that air ducts need to be cleaned on a regular basis. In most cases, they can be left alone and continue functioning properly. So while it may be cliche, there's no need to take the advice of HVAC companies when it comes to air duct cleaning. Now, one thing I do feel passionately about is when people first move into a home, it's worth getting the ducts cleaned, assuming that they have even a fine layer of dust inside them. I personally feel like the residual dust and dirt, skin, hair, and nails that may have been sucked into the central air conditioning system by the last family that was living there is now becoming a part of your airstream for the future. So just like getting a good house cleaning when you move into a house, Cleaning ducts that are in good shape is worth it. You're gonna need all brand new ductwork. Some people replace them every time they get a new system, but most people that I sell equipment to don't. That's because for them at that point in their ductwork's lifespan, it's impractical to do so. You don't have to replace every duct in your house to get better airflow to one or two rooms either. Those rooms can have more airflow delivered by increasing the size of the duct leading to the room. Another way to get more air to a room is to relocate the duct on the supply plenum to a more advantageous spot, typically near the end of the plenum. Yes, the higher R value of the ductwork, the better the performance that you'll have. The ductwork will hold the hot air or the cold air that it's delivering inside it better. And that translates to cooler or warmer air in your rooms depending on the season. Yet it just becomes another add-on or added expense to consider regarding your air conditioning system. There's a lot of misinformation out there when it comes to HVAC systems. You should just consider if they're pushing high price tickets on you to pad their own pockets. A lot of technicians in the HVAC industry are paid straight commission for what they sell. And that's how they put food on the table. Other companies, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, pay their techs a good enough salary that they don't have to push these highly used cliches to get you to buy a new system. If this is your first time watching the channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.